Mr. Chairman and members of the committees, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today to share my experiences on, as former Deputy Assistant Inspector General for Investigations under Inspector General Robert Cobb. I began my federal career 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, in 1983 as an Assistant U.S. Attorney. I served in U.S. Attorney's offices in such positions as Chief of the Narcotics Section, Regional Coordinator of the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, Public Corruption White Collar Crime Chief, Chief of Major Investigations. I also served on details with the Department of Justice and with the United States Customs Service. In the four years before joining NASA, I was Senior Advisor to the Assistant Commissioner in the Office of Internal Affairs at the United States Customs Service. In November 2004, I was selected by Inspector General Robert Cobb as the Deputy Assistant Inspector General for Investigations at the NASA OIG. I served in that position until December of 2005 when I joined the U.S. Postal Service Office of Inspector General as a senior attorney. My testimony today summarizes my experiences and observations during my tenure at the Office of the Inspector General at NASA. During my pre-employment interview with Mr. Cobb, he expressed his unhappiness with management in the Office of Investigations, stating the investigators needed a grown-up to supervise. I accepted the position with the impression that Mr. Cobb wished to improve the quality of work at the NASA OIG and believed that I would be instrumental in that effort. One of my early experiences with Mr. Cobb was so disturbing that I considered leaving the OIG almost immediately afterwards. At a scheduled weekly meeting, Mr. Cobb, in front of his deputy and my supervisor, berated me concerning a word in a letter. In an ensuing monologue, loudly peppered with profanities, Mr. Cobb insulted and ridiculed me. After the meeting, I told Mr. Cobb one-on-one -on -one that I did not expect my superior to use profanity, that the use of profanity was unacceptable, and I would not tolerate profanity. Mr. Cobb listened and gave me no indication if he agreed or disagreed. In the months to come, however, I regularly observed and heard of Mr. Cobb using profanity to berate and demean employees. Mr. Cobb also exhibited a consistent lack of understanding of federal law enforcement. In cases approximately six months apart, Mr. Cobb was notified several hours before NASA OIG agents and FBI agents were to execute search warrants at NASA properties. Mr. Cobb said he would not allow the warrants to proceed before reading the affidavits despite the fact that the responsible OIG supervisor had approved the warrants. The assistant United States attorney assigned to the case thought the warrants were fine, and the warrants were signed by a United States magistrate judge. After reading the warrants, Mr. Cobb's opinions included, there was no probable cause, the assistant U.S. attorney was stupid, and the NASA agents must have hoodwinked the magistrate. Mr. Cobb was also overly concerned about the possible reaction of NASA senior management. Finally, after much discussion, Mr. Cobb reluctantly allowed the agents to execute the warrants. During my short tenure at NASA, at least five other warrants were issued and executed in locations other than NASA properties. Mr. Cobb did not express any interest in those affidavits or warrants. The incident that convinced me that I could no longer be effective in my job occurred in August 2005. Mr. Cobb directed a case accepted for civil prosecution by the United States Attorney's Office in the Central District of California be withdrawn pending a review of the investigation at OIG headquarters. In my 17 years as a federal prosecutor, I had never seen that done. Mr. Cobb claimed he was not aware that the case had even been presented to the U.S. Attorney's Office. However, a bi-weekly reporting document provided to Mr. Cobb in June proves otherwise. Subsequently, Mr. Cobb claimed that the special agent in charge of the case who wrote the withdrawal letter was trying to set him up. 
The assistant U.S. attorney, however, had endorsed the work of the case agent, the case preparation, and the investigative report. Yet, in a subsequent meeting about the case, Mr. Cobb leaned over his desk, just feet from my face, his face red, his fists clenched, and screamed at the same time, slamming his hand down on the desk so hard that I jumped. You know, as well as I do, that this report is a blanking piece of blank. In closing, Mr. Cobb's arrogance, bullying style, and questionable independence limit his ability to lead the NASA OIG, and in turn, has demoralized the NASA workforce. As an example, a recently hired employee, after only two days at the NASA OIG, called the agency she left, requesting her old job back, because most of her staff spent a good portion of the workday looking for a way out. I would be pleased to answer any questions you may have.